Oh, shut up. Cocksucker. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we're going doing? to Brooklyn. Okay. To the I'm lady's okay. house. And where do you live, Darren? His name is Michael. Hi, Michael. Hello. So, Michael? Yes. Take Canal Street to the Manhattan Bridge. So, what are you guys up to tonight? Sounds well, like you're having fun. Well, I have ideas, but, you know. He thinks I'm sexy. Yeah. He thinks I'm cute and sexy, actually. Well, first of all, I think you're beautiful. Okay, he thinks I think I'm you have beautiful. a gorgeous face, but I'm turned on by your body. See? What kind of ideas do you have? What kind of ideas do we have? Well, I, I intended to fuck you. Oh, okay. But. Because this is actually our first Michael, day. don't you enjoy when a man is a man and he just sort of like speaks his mind? Well, what do, what do you think about that? I'm a forward New York woman, so I think it's kind of okay, actually. Really? Yeah. Are we going to sleep together on our first day? <laughs> I think we are. <laughs> <laughs> big women are like conquering. There's something about being in bed with a big woman. If you haven't been, I'm telling you. Once I discovered it, and she's got this this woman thing going on. I'm a little she's bit hot. voluptuous, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> Just big girls are. <laughs> we're very, uh, we're very almighty oh, ISIS kind of thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. It makes the little guy feel like he's big guy. What was it like when you saw each other tonight? I was a nervous wreck. Really? He was yeah, really. I was really nervous. nervous. Why were you so nervous? Because I don't date a lot. Okay. At all. When was the last time you dated? I date a lot, so I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm through this. <laughs> when was the last time you dated? The last time I went on a full-fledged date was years ago. Really? Yeah. Now, I mean, the last woman I... <clears throat> was about four months ago. What do you want? You, want you know, something a little I want a relationship. I want, I want the real deal. So you, you date a lot, right? I do. Oh, I, thought I didn't know that. My friends call me a serial dater. What does that mean? Uh, okay. Well, I just, you know, I don't ever really commit to anybody, and I just find it difficult because I'm, I'm, I, part of me is probably a little afraid to, you know. Af you know afraid to? Afraid to what? To, like, commit. Commit. Okay. Because I'm afraid someone won't commit to me. I'm not looking for mad or anything, but I like, I want to have a somebody, you know? One boy. One steady boy, one boy to live with forever and ever. One boy, that's the way it should be. One day he'll find out this is what love is all about. Why have I not heard this song before? Hmm. Oh, because it's our first day. That's right. That's right. Have you had like a long term boyfriend before? Me? Yeah. Yes. Really? Uh-huh. How long did you date for? I dated a boy when, since the age of 12. Since the age of 12? Yeah, till so, I was 21, and so he was, was cheating on me was, while I was in college, yeah. He that, broke my heart. That's, I can imagine, that's a long time to date someone. I really loved him. Really? Yeah. How did you meet when you were 12? My mother transferred me to Catholic school and we sat next to each other. All the boys used to tease me, but they couldn't beat me up like they did in public school. They made me eat crayons when the teacher went out of the room. Like chew them up and everything? Like... They stuffed them in my mouth and made me swallow them. Oh my god. Half of them are probably in jail today. They were mongrels. I bet. I mean... Don't you think we make a cute couple? Absolutely. I think it's such an opposite thing. It's just like, you know, little white guy, big black woman. And I just like I the way she looks. I white guys now, Michael. Yeah. But I mean, everybody has a type. Every, that's There's nothing exactly wrong with right. that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Right. Yeah, I would say that I'm naturally drawn to Caucasian men ever since I was a little girl. I knew that. But I didn't know anything was wrong with it. There's and, nothing wrong with that. Well, people made me feel like I was wrong. Oh, well, let me help you with that. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> hey, baby. Is this your place? Uh-huh. Are you taking me home or something? Take Jezebel. me home. 
take me home. So listen. Yeah. Before before you guys get out, I just want yeah. to tell you this. Okay. I'm also I'm working on this documentary where I I drive around the city and I just like I get New York stories. Beautiful stories and you when you make the film let us know. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well I'd love I'd love for you to be a part of it. Absolutely. For real. I don't it's have for, any it's of my It's for a show on there. HBO called Taxi Cab Confessions. Oh cool. I've seen it. You've seen it? Yeah. You okay, so that's awesome. I love that show. So if you if you sign this release form. Wait a minute, we have not been on film. Yes. We have not you? Will you? Will you sign? Wait a come no, on, it's our first is, day. We have I know, to. No, but wait a minute. Oh, come on. I'm, I'm up for it. Wait a minute. Absolutely. Are you are you are you completely serious? I'm completely serious. Yeah, we Look at the release here. form. God, what if my mother sees this? There's only one taxi in the city that does this, and you you got in it. I love that. I'm so up. I'm down with it, man. <laughs> up with it, down with it. Today is the um, let's see the last third. party show. One boy, one special boy, one boy to go with, to talk with, and walk with, one boy, that's the way it should be. Uh, 86 on Broadway. Broadway we'll go for a pizza and uh... So you were digging her, huh? Huh? Yeah. Well, she was uh, yeah, she's very a... nice girl. Why didn't you invite the, these girls to go home with you? Because that's not how it's done. You know, that, I mean, that would be cheesy. Uh, no, no, it would have been fine. So you think it's not right to invite a girl on, on the first date home? I don't know what he's talking about. No! You don't feel like that, no, right? no, 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 I don't think it's not right. I'm not conservative by any means, but I'm just saying that if I, you know, if, if, if you want to come home, great. And I won't think any less of you because of that. You won't? <laughs> no. Damn right you would. You think a lot more of them. Well, don't confuse me. Uh, you know, no, but I, I know what I'm talking. I know. Okay, I say this. In this day and age, who comes back home except for that one on the, the blackout night? That was a whole different. <laughs> yeah. blackout the blackout night. Oh, Ooh. Well, we had a night to remember. Oh, I'll tell my. you, it was so bad I couldn't tell my mother who rang me from <laughs> Ireland today. She said, "What'd you do in the blackout?" And I goes, yeah, "Oh, we just sat at home." So <laughs> what happened, really? Enjoy we're on the Upper West Side, so we're stuck. So there's no subways, there's no lights, there's no nothing. And so we go to this bar, and it's all. Oh, we were amazed that the bars were open. And, and you know, two Irishmen, woohoo! The bars are open. This is terrific. <laughs> no work tomorrow. And he goes to the loo, and I mean, I'm, we're standing outside. Everybody's standing outside. This girl's like waving. She's with two guys, okay. and she's waving at us. <gasps> she's with two guys, and she's waving at. And she, actually, she's waving at me because he's in the loo. And so he comes back from the bathroom, and I go, "Dude, <laughs> this girl is fucking waving at me." <laughs> so cut the story short. Um, this girl has a, uh, as we find out, thirty-six double D. She's a huge oh, pair thirty-six of double D. My. And uh, so she decided she ditched the other two guys, and it was kind of embarrassing because. We're very sensitive to that because usually we're the guys getting dished. So um, <laughs> some, this is where it gets embarrassing. Somehow, this then, is where like, it gets embarrassing. Two hours later, we're in Mark's place, half naked, um, <gasps> dancing, <Ooh>. drinking champagne, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, she was a stripper, and I was a little disappointed that uh, she didn't yeah. get fucking totally get her kid off. She, she was, was from Florida. And, and, and she, she was the most, the most the reserved weird. stripper I've ever met. Yeah, really? kind of yeah. No, she was. She was a, kind of. You know what? I tell you, I'll be honest. All I saw was that 36 double D's. <laughs> so you. Were I asked her. I, I asked her while holding her knockers. Says, how big are these anyway? That's how drunk everybody was. So you were holding them? Yeah. And I said, you said how big? How big yeah. there? Oh I know. My it's God. In, I know. It's embarrassing. In the bar. In the bar. You know, Jesus. Oh, yeah. at the bar. Yeah, yeah. How were you holding them? <laughs> like, Both hands. <laughs> It's messy. embarrassing because we would never do this in a million fucking years. But that was the night. Was it? It was. The, it was a weird night. So My, did both of you sleep with her? No, 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 we slept no, with her. no, no. I walked this this girl back. That's five, how sad that night was. So you morning. didn't have sex with her? No. Well, I could have got it up. 
but uh, in fact, I think I had it up. But you know, I think I screwed it up. Deonsi, I screwed it up because he got back. He got back to the apartment. He takes his top off, his shirt off, and he's. I've got a beautiful couch, ABC carpets, <laughs> and he's mulling around on my couch. And all I kept thinking was, that sweaty, dirty bastard is fucking rubbing his skin into my couch. Put your shirt back on. That's what I told him. So he put the shirt back, and actually when we discussed this the next day, then we realized, you know, maybe that was the turning point, you know, okay. and, um, but I just got out of a relationship, and, 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 and so I don't know what I'm doing. I, I, I think I still love my ex-girlfriend, and, and it's, you still, you it's still, fucked up, so, you know, what can I tell you? You still love her? Yeah. She's a great girl. She's the best Phenomenal woman girl. that was ever entered into my life. No, she's the best, definitely the best. Uh, this, is, this is what disturbs me. This is a woman who I can see bearing my children, who, um, growing old with my best friend, the best girlfriend I ever had in my life. Great drinker. And she, yeah, she does say she's a good drinker too. I think it was the fact she brought her home to Ireland. See, so yeah, that's another thing. Any, my mother, any, my mother. Any so every girl, any like, woman that's brought back to Ireland with Mark, a week later she's gone. <laughs> her mom, his mom. My bloody mother. Yeah. I love my mother, but she gets there. And you see, Irish mothers, American girls don't understand them. So what Irish mothers tend to do is instead of talking their their son up. My mother talks you down. <laughs> you know, you're absolutely fucking right. I think that has a yeah. large part to play in. It's the kiss. I mean, my mother I mean, would say, he's useless. He's doing this. He's doing that. What's going on with that? God. My mother's my worst bloody enemy. That's the worst thing. On her own. Get her on a private time. He's useless. He quit his job. He's crazy. God, yeah, that's so. Uh, no, no, my mother, I love her dearly. And, and, and I love my parents and all that. But she, Jesus. So I, you think I swear to God. No. You think that blew well, that's, that's the yeah. third girl you brought home, right? That is the third person, American girl, has come home with me, and, and literally within weeks week, of that trip, two weeks, it's all over. It all went to hell in the basket. Yeah. And, uh, no, 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 nice girls. They were all beautiful girls. Uh, well, well, nice. Well, yeah. <laughs> Don't right. talk yourself up that much. Well. <laughs> Hey, what's up? Yeah, take us to um, 76 in Roosevelt. 76 and? In Roosevelt. In Queens. In Queens? Yes. Okay, sure. So how's your night going? It's about to be good. <laughs> what's that? It's about to be good. You can hit a little club and whatnot. A little bit of fun, yeah. Right on. Did you watch the game? I did, and we won. Awesome. So what club are you going to? We're going to a uh, friend of hers. It's, 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 a, it's a gay club. So, why are you going to a gay club? <laughs> we met, at a, we met at a gay club. We met at, at a club called Lou Shows. I was with another transsexual I was dating. An ugly one. A very ugly one, you know. He would do so many things to please her in different ways that she wouldn't appreciate it. But she still had a dick, though. That's the thing. I did. She wanted me to grab it. I didn't grab it. I didn't touch it. I didn't want nothing about that dick. I was like, yo, that's you. And um, I do not like men. I don't like dick. I love pussy and I love women. Transsexuals like her, yes. That look real. Right. Okay? Wait, do you have a penis? No. And how old were you when you got your operation? I was 19. 19? It's really, really, really bad. Some, some of my friends, some people that I've known, they get their sex changed. They don't take care of it really well. And, like, their... The gap they have, little gap, it, like... Or... Whatever, <laughs> it shrinks, it closes. So if she's not taking care of herself, well, what she's supposed to put down there to keep the the wound the open. wound open <laughs> till it heals, uh huh. It like it it shrinks, and then you won't be able to really really have sex. So, what do you do to keep it from shrinking? 
I have to <laughs> put a dildo every once a day, a couple of hours. A couple hours at a time? Yeah. It looks cute, you know what I mean? It looks, it, like it, it looks real... nice. It looks like a real pussy, you know? <laughs> I could come in Saha and it's just all lovely. You know what I mean? You know, she was riding me on the baby. Go ahead, ride me. Just ride me. Do you. And she was just like, you know, doing her. I was like this. I was like, oh my God, this shit feels so good. I was just grabbing her ass and her titties. And, you know, it was just hot and steamy. Sounds pretty it passionate. It was really good. It was very good. It's five times better than when I used to be a boy. <laughs> really? No kidding. That's the way it is. Trust me. So the first time you saw your new vagina, what did you think about the way it looked? Um, I had never seen a vagina before except in pictures. So, really? Yeah, so I asked one of my sisters. I was like, <laughs> can I look at it? You asked your sister to check yours out? No, I wanted to see hers. It's oh. using my look, and I wanted her to see mine. And when she looked at it, she's like, oh my God. She's like, your pussy looks like nice. I was like, what do you mean nice? It's like, it just looks so nice. It's like the way it is. It's like it has a nice color to it. My, look how mine looks. I was like, I looked at it, I was like, well, at least it looks exactly like yours, but mine is like a little bit different. So what was the difference between yours and your sister's? Uh, my sister, my sister had like a little bit more like extra lip and mine like really didn't. Mine looks it's a pussy. It looks like a pussy. It's, it's a pussy. Pink. It's a pussy. It's a pussy. <laughs> it's it's a just pussy. pink. <laughs> she got a pink pussy. It's like any real female out here. So is this the first transsexual that you've had that has a vagina? Yes, and that looks like a female. Of course, it's the first. I mean, me and her walk in the street, man. Nobody will ever think that we're a gay couple. I mean, cause we are a gay couple because. So you I've always told moms, despite the fact that people oh, that transsexuals do have get their sex change after they think they're females, but they're not. I mean, I don't think myself as a female. But I feel like I mean, she looks better than any real female out there. I do. I'm never so. going to be a female because I can't have kids. I tell her, like, it don't matter. I don't care about that. Real tell female me, feels me. like a real female after she has a baby. Why do you think, think, why so do that? You think that? Because why do you think that? that's well, why how they, do you think that? Because they feel realized that they've given birth, they've given life to this world. Well, that's what a woman is supposed to do. Okay, that's what I'm saying. But I'm not a female. I cannot give birth. Yeah, I'm always end, going to be a man. A yeah. But even without a penis. Yeah. yeah. We had you tricked for a little bit. Fooled for a little bit. No yeah. doubt about it. You absolutely did. So, what about marriage? We I mean, she, about we, we, we've talked about it. You never know. I hope so. What do you think? Well, See, if you was to ask me, I'd be like, yes, yeah, this is the one that I want to be with. That's it. Straight yeah. up and down. <laughs> You're sure? No if, no buts, that's right. You got what you want? No if, no buts, like I said. And so how come you're, like, non-committal? No, you exactly. Just... <laughs> he knows that I love him a lot, that I would do... Just... I would even kill for him, I would. Like, today we went shopping earlier on and, like, I just got mad because this girl goes up to his face and was like, can I help you? And I was like, oh, hell no. I, I didn't get mad at him, but then I asked him, was you staring at her? I'm like, why would I stare something that, why, why would I look at another female knowing that I got a one beside me that's even more beautiful than anything in the world? But I don't know that. Do you, know, you understand like, me? I see where you're coming from. Why Tell should me. I do that? You know, but you don't trust that. I've been treated bad so many times. Trust. I've been treated like shit too, man. And trust me, I mean, I know what it feels to be cheated on. I know, I know, I know what it feels to be with somebody and they look at somebody else. I got know all that feeling, and I wouldn't want to give that feeling to nobody else, knowing that I know how it felt. That's the sucky feeling. Exactly. It is.
going back into the city, right? I am, yeah. Oh, great, okay. I'll take the uh, Manhattan Bridge right by uh, Houston and uh, Elizabeth. Houston and Elizabeth. Yeah. Got it. Good night? Yeah, so far so good. How's yours? You can't complain. Or I won't complain. Rather. <laughs> uh, you a complainer? No, I'm not. <laughs> That's why I'm not complaining. Uh, good. All right. Well, what do you do? Um, I, I'm just fin finishing up my uh, master's in broadcast journalism. Do you have time for social life? Yeah. Yeah? You have a girlfriend? Um, got rid of one a few months back, and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of serial dating right now. Serial dating. How did you get rid of that one? Uh, sh well, she more so got rid of me, which was rough, but it was the, the, the only girl I've ever actually had break up with me. She just broke up with you? Yeah. And you've never had that before? Well, no, and, and gave me no reason. There was no? Nothing, nothing. But um, but she was all she's Jewish and I'm not, so that was part of uh. I think everything going on. It's a different culture. Yeah. And I I don't know your, you know. Ethnicity? No, I'm not Jewish. <laughs> it, it's very different. It is. Okay. You know, and and it's more of a cultural thing. Um, she would talk to her mother. Twelve to fifteen times a day. And, really? Oh yeah. I was just like, look, if we're on a, out on a date. If your mom calls once or twice, that's fine. But after 10, when we're having sex, for instance, and you answer the phone when your mother is calling, come on! Yeah. She would answer the phone when you're having sex? That's ridiculous. And, 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 and when the caller ID would show up and she knew it was her mom. <laughs> no, it would show up on the caller ID yeah, yeah, as yeah. mom. And she would answer it anyway. And I was like, Jesus Christ. Come on. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. So you'd be having sex, right? Right. The phone would ring. And she would be, like, right on the verge, but she would answer the phone anyway. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, exactly. Her mother was, like, the bane of my existence. So <laughs> it, it was bad. Did you ever say to her, listen, it's either me or your mom and these stupid phone calls, you know? Well... It's a different culture, like I said, that was acceptable with their family and their and their uh, the way they were. So I couldn't really pass judgment on it. Her her mother was just a nightmare. Like you know, you hear about the Jewish mother thing, but it was like I got a dose of it so hard. Like I, there, there's something to it. I'll say that. So do, uh, it was do scary. Think, it was scary. What, what do you? What do you think it is? Um, I just think it's something different. I don't know what it is. I just can say that I don't want it happening when I'm having sex with somebody. That's all I know. <laughs> but I would, a few times, like, she'd go to the bathroom and I'd take the battery out of her phone. Just, you know, you gotta, you gotta find a way to, you know, try to make things work. And I did. I tried my best. And she knows that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, were you in love with her at one point? Yeah, I was. That was a tough thing. She was great. She was actually in tears one time, like, it was good sex at the time, she was actually, like, crying at the point, like, like in a good way, but, uh, like, it was very, like, a passion, all of a sudden it was just like, hey, mom, like, straight off from, like, tears and screaming to, like, hey, what's going on, and I was like, oh, my God, it was a big problem, even, <clears throat> even her roommate, and all of a sudden, things would stop, and she would walk out of the room with the phone, and her roommate would be like, like, was it over that quick, what happened, did, she thought I did something wrong, and, and <laughs> What would she say when she picks up the phone? It would it would literally go from like um like oh my god oh my god and, and she would pick up the phone and act like you know oh my god hey mom how are you now it's just like you're naked I'm inside you you just you walked out of the bed and I'm like here what do I do do I wait do I finish things off you know <laughs> no yeah so yes so what would you do um I would usually just wait I was a nice guy about it. Oh, thank you. 
I'm going to Greenwich and Dwayne. Okay. How's your night been? All right. Yeah? Yeah. But are you headed home? Yes. So early? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm exhausted. What exhausted you? Well, I'm going through a breakup. I'm wiped. I just had a lovely dinner with girlfriends. That was fine with me. What happened with your boyfriend? It's just mixed up. Did you love him? Yeah. Who broke up with who? He did, because I have a relationship with my former partner of many years. It's a very bizarre relationship, and he couldn't seem to accept that we have this long-term friendship. Well, how, how often do you see the, the, the other guy? I see him. He lives nearby. He's a firefighter. Really? You know, we went through a lot. There's like a lot of history. <laughs> Were you with this firefighter guy when during all that? Yeah. That crazy night. Yeah. He survived it. He's very lucky. He was there. Yeah. He was on the fourth floor when the buildings collapsed. Uh, he was on the fourth floor. And he was buried, and he survived. It. So he, what happened? Well, I live very close. So I was right there, and, and I saw the plane in the building. And I was very worried that this man that I've been so close with for so many years is going down there. Oh, my God. So I ran toward it to try to, like, warn them. Like, I was cuckoo out of my mind. So you ran to this plane? You ran to the firehouse to tell your friend? No, I ran to, toward Ground Zero itself. Because he, you thought he was there already? Yeah. And then the second plane hit, and, and then I became in danger you from became, where I was. What, what happened? Many, many, many people jumping. Many, oh many my people. Oh, God. You saw them jumping? Yeah. Well, first I went into denial over it. Like, what the hell is that? What the hell is that? But I knew, really, that it was people. Humans. Did you stay there and watch it till it came down? Yes. Just the whole thing pulverizing. Oh, God. Did you think your friend was there? Yeah, I knew he was in there. I watched the first tower collapse. I could not bear to watch the second tower collapse. And I was pretty hysterical, because I knew Mickey was in there, and I kept calling the fire department, and then they had to tell me that <coughs> he was missing. Oh, God. How the hell did he get out? About floors two through six did not completely collapse, like the walls, everything collapsed around the staircase. Yeah. Like. Parts of it stood standing, and there were people in those little crevices. Right, right. And they survived. How was he pulled out? One of his friends found them by accident. By accident? How was that? There was a crevice and a hole, and he just happened to look into it and re realized there were people down there. Oh my God, but there must have been thousands and tons of crevices and he just happened to look at that one? I mean, he was, he was, he was buried alive, this guy, he... Along with a number of other people. I mean, it was such a devastating day for all of us. I just said, pull yourself together uh -huh. and go look for him. And I went and volunteered and handed out water to the firemen. And I got to my apartment and I saw this piece of paper sticking out from under my door. And I started screaming in my hallway. And it was a note from Mickey saying, I'm okay. Oh my God. What happened when you first saw him again? I just started sobbing, sobbing. P partially because I, I knew I had to find out 
who who died and to see him like in such a another state and I was in another state and everybody's traumatized and to find out who died that I really knew and loved and cared about that's a lot to go through yeah did that make you feel I'm worried about him now I'm concerned about him now why why so he wasn't even sure if, like, if he was dead or alive or if he was going to die. And then losing all your best friends for many years. He was a different person for a while? First I thought he was going to snap like a tree branch. And anger, a lot of anger. He was screaming angry toward, toward me. Why towards you? Well, I mean, he wasn't a full deck for a little, quite a while, put it that way. And what happened with you guys? It didn't work. It didn't work. And that's okay. Like, he's my best friend, and I think so highly of him. And he thinks highly of me, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you can have a healthy relationship. Did that break your heart? Well, yes, it, it did. But once your heart's broken, like, you know, a long time ago, you sort of come to accept that and, and you move on. Hey man, what's up? Right. 51st Street and 4th Avenue in Brooklyn. 51st? Yeah. And 4th? Uh-huh. So your night? It was crazy. It was like really bizarre. This fucking girl asks, she invites me out, right? <laughs> man, women are fucking mad, yo. What happened? I know this girl by where I work. She works at the, uh, where they sell uh, fruit shakes and shit. She's Hungarian. She's fine as hell. Okay. Really thick girl, but mad shapely. You know, breast for fucking beautiful. I mean, she's fucking beautiful. Her self esteem's a little fucked up. So I meet her over here and shit. And the guy is the guy who DJs over here. I don't know. She's liking me. She's liking him. She's back and forth. You know, I see what the fuck is going on and shit. I'm like, oh, brother, this chick is crazy. You know? Was she playing? I don't know what the. I think she wanted both of us to fuck her. You know, I'm like, what? I'm not sharing no pussy with anybody. It's just like, oh, brother, not another crazy chick, man. I just can't deal with no more crazy-ass women. Yeah? You yeah. date a lot of crazy-ass chicks? Yeah, man. I don't know, I'm kind of attracted to crazy women because, you know, it makes life a little bit more interesting, you know. It depends on how crazy or what level of crazy, you know. Yeah. But, uh, last girl I dealt with, she's a little crazy. You know, there's some girls who know how to get fucked, but there are some girls who know how to fuck. Right. There's a difference. And this girl named Dawn, man, this chick will get on top of you and she will literally try to break your dick off your fucking torso. <laughs> she will get on top of you and try to bend and break your shit and <coughs> pop it right off your body, man. But I'm that I'm the wrong motherfucker. I just hang in there and I just fucks her, you know, she's just she can't fuck with me. So she, she tries to make it hurt? Yeah. She like, tries to fucking make, but see, all that, 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 that turns me on more, so she can't, she can't affect me. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't know what the fuck she do with those other cats. But me, I'm just... But how, how does she do that? How does she try she, to... She... I think she takes her pussy to... And she tightens it up around your dick or some shit. And then she just, like, works her hips. Right? And she puts her hand on your chest. And she just lays it. She just fucking works it. And you just be laying there like, oh, shit. Right? <laughs> the average cat would just come. But I ain't the average guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not the average guy. Then I just, I just fucking, I, don't know, I just fuck her till she like, till she damn near passes out. <laughs> she um, couldn't break you, man. Nah, she can't break me. So, so you think that she was just doing this for you, or? I think she's a freak, actually. The, the, the Hungarian chick is a freak too. She like girls, you know. She's a freak, you know. And, uh, all these girls are freaks, man. You know. They want to have fun just like guys do, you know? They ain't no different. Yeah, yeah, man. I don't know, man. I just can't deal with no plain Jane chick. Like, okay, yes, all right. You know, I, I just can't deal with that. I yeah, like me. Somebody either. with a little bit more fire under them, you know what I mean? I, mean, I love being a man. It's a great thing, but... Uh, I mean, I love women, man. So it's like, you know, basically... But you know what? I'll be honest with you. This year, I took, like, a little break. This is my first year I really took, like, a break. Oh, yeah? Okay, I didn't have sex for like seven, eight months. No shit. Yeah, man, I took like a break. I was just like, you know, my last girlfriend like drove me nuts and shit. So I was just like, let me just get a break because I can't fucking deal with this shit no more, you know? And then I meet this girl, man. She's a fucking virgin. Oh. So I finally fucked her, right? I fucked her like about a month ago. And she was a virgin when you grabbed her? That's what she said. Uh-huh. 28 years old. So what do you think? Virgin. You think she was? I don't even know anymore. These fucking girls are so tricky, man. Who the fuck knows, man? Did she act like one? No. I'm like, you ain't never fucked before? You full of shit. You know what I'm saying? She ever fall in love with these girls? I've been in love a few times. So you think that you could ever settle down and just have one more? Yeah, because I kind of got it all figured out already. I always treat my wife like I'm dating her. I think as long as I do that... I think it'll be all right. Yeah, but I mean, could you be happy just fucking one woman? If she's fucking me properly, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I could be happy. As long as passion is there, if I have passion in my relationship, I could be faithful to my wife. Yeah, yeah. man, come on. Don't, 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 when you get me, stop doing the shit you did to get me, you know? Keep doing that shit. You know, keep yourself looking good, you know? Keep that pussy sweet, you know? Yeah, I could stay with one woman. When you want women, that's when all the women want you. When you got one woman and you chilling, then that's when they really want you, man. Yeah, it's funny like that, huh? Shit is crazy. I'm like, damn, man, shit. Ain't nothing sacred anymore? Shit. I'm so sorry. That's alright. Alright. Alright, we're all in? You yeah. Got it. Okay, great. <laughs> so, how's your night going? <laughs> uh, that's a very, very good question. You know what Mom said? It was really good. It was. What? She said it'd be a good night to be bulimic. Oh! Uh, <laughs> that ought to tell you something. <laughs> How are you all related here? Uh, well, that's the three my husband, of us. and that's my mother in the middle. Oh, okay. So there's a, there was a whole big family group. So how long have you two been married? Oh, I don't know how long we've been married. 37 years. <laughs> 36 years? 36, wow. A long time. So how long was mom married? 58. 58, we're creeping up on you. Yeah. yeah. So are you still married? My you, husband died. Oh, your husband passed. But 58 years, that was pretty good. Yeah. That's like, <laughs> that was pretty good. That's... How long ago was that? He's been dead four years. Where'd you meet your husband? How did that happen? Oh, my God. <laughs> they sweep you off your feet? Okay, did they have chemistry then? Yeah. <laughs> the sparks flew. Yeah. But the first time he called me, he said, 
would you like to go riding tonight? Right. And I said, no. <laughs> Did you have cars then? That's what he wanted he us to go riding, huh? Riding, riding like a horse? And I said, no. call me again. Riding in a car. Call oh, me again, okay. maybe a little in advance. Oh. So he called and he, Oh, that's good. He she said, played hard to get. Would you, yeah, yeah, hard no. to get. I wasn't going riding on a first date. Yeah, riding, as, as we called uh, driving. Or driving. Okay, maybe. so in the car. Yeah. I don't think you should riding? Go riding. Yeah. <laughs> Is there something it means that it meant then that it doesn't mean now? Yeah. What do you mean, riding? Riding. But the next time he called me, I think Which I was, said go fishing. Was I? <laughs> yeah, we did. We did yeah. go fishing. Yeah, you you, you didn't mind going fishing. Our second date was fishing. And the second time he called, he said, would you like to go to dinner and a movie? Oh. And I said yes. Oh, okay. now you said oh, yes. Oh, okay. 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 Dinner and a movie. But that was a little more sane. You had to go for the you big know, back in the old days, that was 1940. We you guys went fishing on your first date? No, was second it? date. He took me to a free... What? Home builder show. Oh. Um, Wait, um, was there anything? I didn't hear you party. complain. It was a ah, free. You had such a terrible time. So he took you fishing the, the second time? Yeah, with his. Did nephew we catch any fish? And some was, other people. Was it romantic for you? No. no. <laughs> it smelled. What were you thinking? Taking her fishing. I wanted to go no. fishing. I figured if she wanted to go fishing and I wanted to go fishing, we had something in common. Well, did she want to go fishing? I don't think so. <laughs> Not particularly, but we got engaged two weeks after we knew each other. Get out of here. Yeah. That is scary, so soon. I see, if our Too son did that, we would have killed him. Oh, what made you want to marry him? Me? Yeah. Uh, a good question. I, it probably wouldn't have worked if we had really gotten to know each other. Oh. <laughs> Why do you say that? You know, so that's <laughs> interesting. That's interesting. Uh, well, no, here's the idea. Years ago, kids didn't live with each other before getting married. You mean like they try each other out? Well, yeah, you just they're going to return it. So you can't tell how someone is on a date because they're on their best behavior. But if you live with someone for a year or two or however long it takes, you will then know when you get married, you're, you know who you're marrying. And you didn't. I didn't do it because, you know, <laughs> parents were against that kind of stuff then. So why do you say if you'd known each other, you wouldn't have gotten married? Oh, she was oh, kidding. Okay. I, think I'm ki I think I'm kidding. You think you're kidding? <laughs> you think you're kidding. Yeah. Now, what would you say? <laughs> what would I say? If we had known each other longer. Our <laughs> marriage for the first couple of weeks was terrific. <laughs> That's so how it actually, actually, we came up here on our honeymoon. That was a disaster. In New York? Yeah. What was the honeymoon like? You got a room with twin beds because it was cheaper. <laughs> well, it made sense to me. And you you bumped into this? an older couple that you oh. knew who invited us to, to go with them to Philadelphia for the next day. Was I, and I, I, I wanted to go. I wanted to go, as right, I recall. Because it was going to be like free, I think. Is that what it was? <laughs> uh huh. Oh my goodness. So, Mom, where did you go on your honeymoon? We went to Niagara Falls. Ooh, nice. Niagara Falls. He didn't get you twin beds, did he? I know. Down. Down. Oh, well. It, um, it worked for you, didn't it? Oh, we were madly in love. We were madly in love. Madly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said madly. Explain okay. madly. Explain madly. <laughs> what do madly mean? Yeah. Passionately. Ooh. Passionately, even better. Okay. We were attracted to each other. Physically. Yeah. So and there was chemistry, a physical and attraction. And we had a lot to talk about. Well, did we... you get a chance to try out the goods before you... No. You no. didn't. No, sir. <laughs> uh-huh. That's why the marriage My, didn't last so long. See, in those days, I mean, this goes back to 1940. My mother taught me, you may not. And that was it. And you believed her. Yeah, yeah. I listened. Maybe it's more romantic not to try the, you know. I think it's a bad idea. I think it's it, a bad right. idea too. Well, because you don't know who was, you're marrying. I thought it yeah. was a good idea. I, I can't believe that people today would get married without checking each other out. I really oh. can't. I'm sorry. Well, today is and different. I'm, uh, well, why is it different than any other day? It was. You're going to be living with somebody uh -huh. for the rest yeah. of your life that you don't even know uh, how uh, intimate uh, intimacy will work. Come on. Because oh, yeah, it's I, a vital part of marriage. Well, to tell me about it. Well, it, wor you, it worked out. Um, you took a gamble, just didn't you? Dumb luck. Just dumb, dumb luck. Just dumb luck. That's yeah. And you had $300. Really? <laughs> well, you didn't marry for money, did you? No. That's good. So what did you marry for, if not for love. money? Love. love. You're talking about love. That's stuff that we read about. Now, maybe you're saying that if you really care for one another, the other stuff will work, is what you're saying. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. You were lucky.
I think. I really do because well, I, I think people. I was lucky because Irvin was just the nicest guy. I mean, he he was thoughtful that's, and he was. That's ethical. wonderful. That's wonderful. But that does have no bearing on what we're talking about. I think it has a lot of bearing. Right. I think your mind plays a big part. Oh, sure. to get a female cab driver. Yeah, that's pretty rare. So where'd you just come out of? The um, Stinger. Yeah, it cool? Stingers. It was okay. awesome. It's always If you awesome. get naked, you get a free drink. Talk. Really? So what are you going to do? I have to do if it. If you have sex on the bar, you get a free bottle. Yep. Oh, man. My friend Ali used to, a I bartender, and make... she says that she saw it twice. Really? A boy on girl, though. Screw that, I want to see boy on boy or something. You know, <laughs> that's that's, that, wild, that's right? worth a bottle. <laughs> Colin, the guy who runs a karaoke thing, he got naked, really? ass naked, and yeah. sang karaoke. Get out. Not just, not just on the bar, but sang karaoke while naked. There's not so many places in New York where you can get naked, so I think that's... Yes, exactly. We yeah. need more places in New York where you can get naked. Yeah, be comfortable with nudity. Exactly. <laughs> naked cab from now on. You are. Yes. You are. You are. I'll take my shoes off. <laughs> oh, get out of here. Nobody wants your stinky uh, ass. Nobody you wants can to your feet. <laughs> All the girls in the cab get topless. You did it in the bar. Why not here? It was just a bunch of, you know, close old friends. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying, What man. if we sing a song for you? <gasps> yeah. We just came from karaoke. We are fired up. Ready. Uh, Ready. <laughs> this is the funnest cab ride I've ever been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So what are we gonna sing? Topless, yes. topless karaoke. I, I, I will survive. Know. Yes. I will survive. I wish I had a camera right now. This is the kind of shit nobody's ever gonna believe. Ready? <laughs> All right, do it. Ready? One, two, okay, three, ready? four. Okay. One, two. Woo! <laughs> okay. I'm Where's so I was afraid. afraid. I was, I was so petrified. I think I'd have to live without you by my side. Oh, damn. And I spent so many nights thinking how you did me wrong. And now I go strong. Uh, uh, and I learned how to get along oh, and show your back uh, uh, from outer space. I should have changed that super life. I should have made you leave your keys. If I'd have known for just one second, you'd be back to bother me. You're not good. Woo! What got to do? Just turn around now. Cause you're not welcome anymore. Weren't you the one who tried to hurt me with goodbye? You think I'd crumble? You think I'd lay down and die? Oh, no, not I. I will survive. Oh, as long as I know how to love, I know. That was fantastic. Kiss today, goodbye. The sweetness and the sorrow. We did what we had to do. And I can't regret what I did for love. Right here? Yep, this is cool. Before you get out, let me tell you what I'm doing. I drive around talking to passengers in my cab yeah. all night long about their life. Yeah. 
for a, a documentary. Oh, yeah? You ever heard of Taxi Cab Confessions on yeah. HBO? You are fucking kidding me, I man. Don't bullshit me, man. Take a look at the release. <laughs> Don't bullshit me, man. There's a camera right here. Have you seen the show before? Yeah! Ain't it great? Yeah! <laughs> Well, here you are. You You're your fucking name. kidding me. I am totally, totally, totally for real, man. I just told you guys my, I just told you my personal shit. It was dynamite, man. You are fucking blowing my head right now, dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a night. The bars are dry. The dream was ours to borrow. It's as if we always knew But I won't forget What I did for love What I did for love Have you ever heard of Taxi Cab Confessions? Yes, the HBO thing, is it? Yeah This isn't this, is it? Yeah Where's the camera then? Man. No, 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 it's I in have, here yeah, These I have are lights, man here. Very clever yeah, that's it, is it? Oh, oh Jesus. fucking Jesus. They're everywhere, yeah? Sorry. That's Pardon my okay. language. One, two, three, four, five. I look like shit. I'm not even wearing my fucking nice shirt. That's what you really got to be worried about. <laughs> <laughs>